Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be discussing the concept of flux and in particular electric flux. So I made this visual because I feel like uh, visualizing this topic is really helpful. So hopefully nothing's blocking the screen. So what I have going on here is two different cases and um, kind of two different views. I've got the side view here on the left and the front view on the right. And of course, case one is up here and case two is down here. Now some important things to talk about before we jump in is um, a couple of ancillary concepts. One of them is going to be that there, there is a vector, the, the area vector. I know we typically don't think about area as a vector, um, but we represent it as a vector. And the area vector is always perpendicular to the surface at any given point. So as you can see here over in case one on the leftmost drawing, the area vector is perpendicular to the plane that we're uh, using to demonstrate a surface. Secondly, the concept of fletchings and arrowheads. As you can see, this is, this is a fletching. It's like looking at an arrow from behind, and this is an arrowhead, and that's like looking at an arrow from the front. And so what that means for field lines or for vectors is if we see a fletching, it means that the vector is going into the page, and if we see an arrowhead, it means the vector is coming out of the page. All right, so kind of the idea of flux, as you can see written down here, is it's essentially the amount of field lines that pass through a surface, um, any given surface. And that's kind of a conceptual way to look at it. Remember, field lines aren't real per se, it's just our model. And so, as you can see in case one, the um, surface or the plane in this case is perpendicular to the electric field lines. Whereas in case two down here, it's a, it's a skew. It's not perpendicular with the electric field lines. And as you can see up here, all of the E field lines are passing through the surface. Whereas down here, you know, maybe one of them or more, depending on what that angle is, aren't actually penetrating and, and passing through that surface. So in case two, we would have less field lines passing through the surface than in case one. However, for this example, we're assuming that the electric field is uniform. So in other words, it's the same everywhere um, and it's constant value. And we're assuming that this plane is the same as the plane in case two. It's just the same plane has been um, tilted to where it's no longer perpendicular with the electric field lines. So for case one, um, by the way, this symbol right here is a, a capital phi, and I write a sub E uh, to represent the flux, the electric field flux, right? So in the future, we'll end up having magnetic field flux, and then we'll have a different uh, subscript for that. So in case one, it seems pretty straightforward. If we want to know the amount of electric field lines that are passing through a particular patch of area, we would take the electric field and just times it by the total area of our plane. And so for this case one, it's just E times A. Whereas for case two, um, we're kind of, as you can see, because we're using these fletchings for this uh, image, we're looking, we're looking parallel with the electric field. So if I draw it over here, this is our eye right now for the second part of the drawing. And as you can see, where some of the E field lines aren't penetrating and passing through the plane. And you may notice that based on the left drawing for case two, that if we increase the angle that the area vector is from the E field lines, that there's gonna be less and less E field lines passing through that plane. And at some point when our plane is lying flat and the area vector is completely perpendicular to the E field, um, assuming that our plane has zero depth, zero um, width to it, 
that would mean that no E field lines were passing through. And so in order to kind of account for this, we're going to invent this. And this is just for this video, I'm calling it a perpendicular. So the area that uh, is a kind of apparent, it's like an apparent area when you're looking perpendicular to the surface. And so as you can see over here with these angles theta, I've found that the apparent area when you're looking parallel with the E field, it, you kind of have an apparent area that is less than the area, the true area. So as you can see, if this is theta then, and this is the height, then the apparent height when viewed from the other direction would be H cosine theta. Of course, the width in this case isn't changing. So for case two, to find our electric flux, we're gonna take the electric field times that apparent area that um, is what it looks like how much area there is if you're looking at it, you know, you look at something from a different angle and it'll, it'll appear as though it has a different area, even though it doesn't. That's why I made sure to uh, label it with a different subscript. So if the apparent area is the real area times cosine theta, where theta is the angle that the area vector makes with the E field lines, then the electric flux for case two is going to be E times A times cosine theta. All right, so there's a useful tool here. Um, we might think back to the dot product, where if we had two vectors and their dot product was zero, that would mean that these vectors were perpendicular. And as we were discussing over here, if our area vector and our E field vector are perpendicular, then there would be zero flux. Whereas if A and B are parallel, we just end up with A times B, right? This is case one up here. When the E vector and the A vector are parallel, then that's cosine zero. Cosine zero is one. All right, so let me clear this. So the formal definition that we're gonna use, um, I'm gonna say for uniform electric fields is going to be with the dot product. So the electric flux is going to be defined for uniform electric fields as the electric field dotted with the area vector. And of course, we can write that as the magnitude of A times the magnitude of E. I actually kind of got that backwards. Not that it matters because multiplication is commutative. So this is equivalent to the magnitude of E times the magnitude of A times the cosine of the area that displaces E vector from A vector. All right. So then there's one more definition that we kind of need to discuss, and that's when um, we have a non-uniform E field. So in this case, we're gonna have to kind of come up with a calculus version of this. And kind of like we've talked about in the past, um, if you put a differential on one side, you have to put a differential on the other side. So I'm gonna write this as the, the small amount of electric flux is equal to the electric field dotted with the area infinitesimal or the, the little bit of area. So this might be nice. Um, well, heck, even if the E field is uniform, well, no, no, yeah. So if the E field is dependent on area, for example, if I had a charge here, and of course the E field is spreading out radi radially, which means that the electric field strength is getting weaker with respect to the inverse of the radius squared. So here on this surface that I've drawn, we can tell that depending on where we're at on the surface, the E field is going to have a different strength. So the electric field here is not uniform across the surface. 
So essentially what we have to do at that point, let me draw this a little more like a surface. What we have to do at that point is we have to use calculus and we go down and we take a look at the, what we're gonna call DA vector. So this is DA and it is perpendicular to the surface at any given point. And then we would have to integrate this um, right here over the whole surface in order to get the flux through this surface. So of course, when we have differentials on both sides, we can integrate. And the integral of d anything is just that anything. So that leads us to the electric flux equals e dot dA. And this is a preference. Um, quite a few people will just write a single integral bar. And I like to write two, just because it reminds me that this is a, a two, um, it's a uh, double integral, because of course area is, you know, it's a length times length. So we would integrate tr twice um, for all such DAs. And then that would give us the total electric flux due to the particular electric field through the surface. So I hope this was useful to you and I'll see you next video where we'll be discussing Gauss's law for electric fields.